So we got a lot of news to get to today, as it is a chock full news day on this December the 2nd, with starting with an update on Stone Cold Steve Austin and the possibility of the Rattlesnake fighting at WrestleMania this year. It seems more likely, as of the last report from WrestleVotes.com, that Stone Cold will not be in ring this year at WrestleMania, and it seems more likely that WWE may be putting together a live show similar to the one that we've saw we've seen with The Undertaker, where uh, I guess you could say Austin would tell would tell stories about his career as the company is looking for uh, people outside of Taker to have a live show during WrestleMania weekend, and two of the names discussed are Steve Austin and Trish Stratus. The fact of the matter is, I know that not all wrestling media is trusted, but WrestleVotes usually knows how to report the truth and keep it that way. So I'm going to go with that, and I'm not heavily disappointed about the idea. So if John Cena and The Rock are the two legends, like massive legends, that are a part of WrestleMania weekend this year, and that leaves Steve Austin out of the picture, I would not be heavily disappointed about that. Another update about a longtime WWE employee, that being Kevin Dunn, the head of television production. A lot of fans have been looking forward to or expecting the report to come down that Kevin Dunn would be released from WWE ever since Vince McMahon resigned from his position as the owner of the company back over the summer. But thus far, Kevin Dunn has not resigned from the uh, resigned or been let go from his position in the company and i honestly do not see it coming anytime soon because i think that trip that stephanie and nick khan have put aside their differences with kevin and set it aside as something that it's be better for business if kevin is with the company than kevin being without the company or the company being without kevin dunn or at least that's maybe how they view things, in my opinion. Speaking of updates, there is an update on Damage Control and the original lineup for that faction that debuted back at, this, at SummerSlam and was really the first step in the general direction of Triple H being in power because it was something out of the ordinary, unexpected, and something that had Triple H's name written all over it. It was when Bailey returned to the company alongside Io Sky and Dakota Kai, which was something that really got the fans going as it happened in the opening match, at, at the end of the opening match of SummerSlam. And the fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, the original lineup or the lineup of the stable that we saw at the at SummerSlam. I don't know why I keep thinking it was at Survivor Series. It was at SummerSlam. The lineup of the stable that we saw at SummerSlam was going to be a little bit different. Had WWE went along with it back a few years ago when Bailey first proposed the idea for the faction. Because Bailey's initial or the initial idea, according to Dakota Kai, was Bailey, Dakota Kai, Candice LeRae, and Tegan Knox as the initial uh, setup for the faction. In my opinion, from what we've seen in NXT, Tegan Knox never really got the opportunity to be a heel down in NXT. So her giving uh, them giving her the opportunity to be a heel on the main roster would have been something that changed things up a little bit and would have been a lot, you know, would have been something that was very nice to see, in my opinion. But it's a very interesting idea and something that shows how much things have changed because you figure that when that was the case, it was under Vince. So you have to wonder if Vince is the reason why that faction didn't happen because it's pretty obvious 
that he saw certain people as heels and certain people as baby faces. So it is pretty obvious. I mean, it, it is at least something to wonder if Vince saw Bailey as more of a baby face or as a top level heel, as not a top level heel that was in need of a faction. Because as you remember, Bailey was a heel under Vince. So, you know, it's something to at least think about and consider. Speaking of the women's division, we will take a we will take a step over to AEW and look. Or speaking of women's wrestling, might be more accurate. We will take a step over to AEW and look at our friends in the Ring of Honor women's division, as current Ring of Honor women's champion Mercedes Martinez is back in active competition, and will have the opportunity to finally compete after being on the shelf for a few months at Final Battle as the third match for Final Battle has been announced with Mercedes Martinez going up against Athena for the Ring of Honor Women's Championship. In my opinion, it is pretty obvious that Athena may have been overshadowed as a member of the AEW roster since she debuted for the company as she had a little bit of momentum going at first, but that momentum went away soon after, and she really has had a difficult time recapturing it. That's why, in my opinion, you've seen a heel turn come the way for Athena, because it gives her that newfounded momentum that she may have lost back soon after her debut. The fact of the matter is, though, Athena and uh, Mercedes Martinez will be colliding at final battle for the Ring of Honor World Championship. Again, much like I said about, uh, much like I said about NXT Deadline, that was the pay per view. NXT Deadline coming up next week on December the 10th. We will also be doing a prediction video for Ring of Honor's pay per view on December the 10th as well. Um, it will be separate videos, of course. It will be separate videos, of course. They're not just going to be one video, but it will be it will be together. Hopefully, we will have a little bit more mat a little bit more in the match department. Maybe one for the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions FTR set up for the pay per view between now and Wednesday, I mean, next Saturday. But we'll have to wait and see what happens on that front. Speaking of AEW, I will give you one more update for now until we can now. So this way it will give time to narrow down what exactly is going on between AEW, WWE, and William Regal. This way we can actually narrow it down and shift the focus to other things that because William Regal stuff is getting to the point where it's a lot like what happened with CM Punk. No news uh, where I'm going to start saying that no news is good news because having heard so many th different things in so many different ways, basically it would be easier to say that people could, if it would be easier if people could just say they don't know for certain what's going on, but this is what they've heard. And that people, and that they lead off with people taking it with a grain of salt as opposed to people just believing it. But the fact of the matter is, Brian Alvarez is reporting that there may have been a possibility that WWE, that William Regal had a agreement put in place with him and Tony Khan when he signed the contract. You know, when he signed the contract back in May before his debut, that if if Triple H ever took power, if Triple H ever took power, that he would be able to leave, that he would be able to leave AEW and return to the WWE because Triple H was back in power. That is a very, very, very interesting concept and a very interesting idea but the fact of the matter is 
I don't know how certain that is because I don't see Tony Khan actually having the opportunity to put that in place. Because would he sign somebody with the idea that he that they could return to WWE if Triple H was put back in power? I know that at one point that was something that nobody ever thought would happen. But the fact of the matter is, would you give somebody like William Regal that power and then invest in him like he has? That is a question I don't think we can answer, but I don't know that that is something that should be expected. But this is the one of the reasons why I said this is the last update, because clearly people don't know what the hell is going on. So at least giving it some time, we may be able to figure out what the hell is going on on the front of William Regal and AEW. Speaking of AEW, we now have some plans for at least future plans for AEW, for AEW's world champion, MJF, with MJF possibly becoming, I mean, possible uh, with Brian Danielson likely being MJF's opponent at winner, Revolution next year. Not anytime soon which is not anytime soon, but the fact of the matter is, that is the first pay-per-view for AEW in 2023 is Revolution in March. So it is possible that they want to set aside that match for Revolution. But also it's possible that they may be going the route of having MJF be more of a pay-per-view champion as opposed to a television defending champion which would just result in MJF only having a small number of title defenses unless something changes, which I don't know if that's a problem or a, uh, you know, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But either way, that is what the plan is for next year, which is not surprising considering the fact that Mox and Hangman Page will likely be feuding for the, not too, for the near future at least. And also it's not too surprising because... Ricky Starks is getting the first opportunity against MJF on December the 14th at Winter is Coming. So there's, you know, there's that happening as well. The fact of the matter is, though, we got another update on the Fight Forever video game. Unfortunately, it does not include a release date yet. But what we do know is it is a small update on the fact that CM Punk has not been removed from the game and it was reported by AEW themselves in an interview with Sports Kita that they said that CM Punk, though Punk was removed from the cover art, he was not removed from the game, and he is still a playable character in AEW's video game. And two more updates before we go. Cody Rhodes is recovering nicely. It is un unknown when Cody will return, but it is likely being held back for a surprise. But either way, Cody Rhodes is recovering nicely from his torn pectoral muscle back at Hell in a Cell earlier this year. And also, an interesting bit of news, Kevin Thorne was a part of the AEW Lumberjack match on Rampage tonight. So, there's that. Also, I just want to note that, yes, I do anticipate doing a preview for Rampage, even though I missed the preview for Dynamite. We will do a preview for Rampage this week. Uh, later today, but either way, I just want to say that seeing Kevin Thorne, good for him. But these have been my thoughts on wrestling, and I, I want to hear from you down in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts on anything and everything discussed in this video down in the comment section below. Also, you can let me know you're enjoying this content by leaving a like and subscribing to the channel for more content just like this that you can only find right here at Wrestling Express. And until next time, before you go, do not forget to ding-dang that notification bell to always know when a new video is up on the channel right down there next to the subscription box, and I will see you again soon.